Hello everybody and welcome back to the HTAB YouTube channel. Today you join me in a very familiar and recognisable setting. And uh, that setting isn't me outside filming a bus video, or I'm not at Inverness filming a transact video. No, we're back here on the model railway, as you can see behind me. And since last time, I've actually got some new lights. Ooh, look at them, how beautiful. Anyway, today we're not talking about lights, but we're actually doing something very exciting. Something that I've been teasing you with for quite a while now. And it's actually just, uh, where, where is it? Pointing the wrong way? It's there, just behind my left shoulder. How very exciting. And uh, that thing is this. So yes, today we're going to be reviewing this, a blue box, and if I turn it upside down, you can see the manufacturer, Dapol, Dapol, however you want to say it, and also it's OO gauge. And I'm going to give a full box reveal right now. You can see it's the Dapol class 121 slash 122 diesel rail car, and this one is actually in the load pull livery. Uh, taking a look at the end of the box then, you can see it is 4D015007 and it's class 122 number 55012 in load hall RT learn livery, meaning it's the root learning car. Yes, look at this side of the box then, there's some more sort of, what's the word, uh, diagrams slash blueprints, even though they're white, white prints. And uh, yeah, that's about it on the box. It's a pretty box, it's big, it's a big box, so... Uh, it's about time we open it up. So I'm gonna reveal the lid just like this. Look at look at this guys. And there's some foam. <laughs> so that's nice, there's always foam and it has hairs on it. Okay, so we'll just pop the foam to the side over there. Uh, what do we have here then? Let me just pop the actual box down itself. Ooh, I can see the model. Uh, we have some, uh, let's see, um, Dapol OO gauge, what does that say? Class 122 slash 121, diesel mechanical, multiple units, so it's just like a maintenance guide. Don't need to read through that, I'll probably have a look at it after I film this segment. We should just move that to the side as well. And, uh, oh, we've got we've got an owner's manual, guys. Look at this. And you can see the differences between the, new, uh, the different variants of the unit. So the uh, 121, or is it? No, the 122 and the 121, the 122 has uh, boxes on the front, whereas the 122 doesn't. Basically the same, but there is some subtle differences. I'll just move that to the side. Uh, also, in the pack, we get some uh, little details such as, like, what are they? Like, brake pipes and tiny things that I shan't be fitting as they're too delicate for my sausage fingers. Uh, also, I better show you the actual model itself. There it is. Look at that. It's in its blister pack. Right. Let me actually take it out of its blister pack then. Oh, that's not very tightly fitted in there, but that's okay, seeing as I can actually get it out without causing too much damage. And there it is. You can see it perfectly well. So it's in like another case by the looks of it. Let me just uh, satisfyingly take this out. Oh, it's stuck. That's actually a good thing that it's stuck. That means it's tight and it won't be rattling about inside the box, causing mayhem. There we go. Look at this concentrating very heavily there just plunk that back in there and uh, I'm revealing the layers it's like past the parcel even though there's only one of the people here playing it it's like single man past the parcel just take that out with the annoying noise of the big snake box and I shall carefully lift the model out of its packaging just put the packaging on the floor and I shall give you a first hand look there it is Oh, it's quite weighty out of the box straight away. I wasn't expecting it to weigh that much. I was expecting it to be a lot lighter than that. But it is quite heavy indeed. Oh, look at that. This is honestly like the first time I've ever seen this. I've not even had it out of the box. I've, I've Well, I've taken the sleeve off. That's as far as I'm going. I've taken the sleeve off, but that's about it. That looks really nice. So, uh, now I thought it would be appropriate to show you some history on the class 122s and 121s, so I shall share some history with you now. 
Nicknamed Bubble Cars, the Class 122 single car double ended driving motor vehicles were built by the Gloucestershire Railway Wagon and Carriage Works during 1958, and additional nine single ended driving trailers were also produced. Mainly used on the London Midland region, some were also used in Scotland. Routes served included many branch lines as well as local services between Dundee and Arbroath. And here's the model up close and personal for you then. And at this angle you really get to appreciate the itty bitty details that you may not notice from far away. Such as interior of the cab which is fully painted out like the handbrake wheel just there and the horn which are painted in silver. As well as the chairs which are painted in a maroony red colour. Also on the front you've got the exhaust pipes which are only at one end like the real thing. As famously these units only had exhaust pipes at one end. I guess, well, they just don't need exhaust pipes at the other end. Also, it's got windscreen wipers. It's got three of them, which are, believe it or not, separately fitted onto the uh, windscreens. As well as that, there's some separately fitted lamp brackets just painted in black, and the buffers aren't sprung. Also, as you can see, it's got NEM pockets on each end, which sag slightly, but that shouldn't affect this model, as it won't be coupling to anything on my layout, at least. Uh, but in real life, like when they were in BR Green and probably when they were painted in BR Blue, they used to couple to milk tankers and goods wagons along branch lines. Also, as you can see, there's some little stickers like the Danger Overhead Wire stickers just there. You can see them where my pencil is pointing. And just here you can see there's a verification, not verification, classification sticker, not verification. I'm not getting verified. <laughs> anyway... Also, on the front, there's directional lighting. I've been reading up on that on the box, and definitely this is directional lighting that works perfectly. Well, hopefully it works perfectly. Also, I've been reading that inside of the cab, there is actually lighting, which is the first of my models to actually feature inside lighting, which is very exciting indeed. Coming around the side of the model, then, you start to appreciate the paintwork a little bit more. With the black and orange line in the middle there, as you can see, there's no paint bleeds at all. And also on the load hull logo, which is picked out in two shades of grey, black, white and orange. An interesting colour choice for a logo, but I really think it works. Also up front, there's this separately fitted handrail, which is picked out in white, as well as the door handle there, as you can see, that's picked out in silver. Inside, you can see more of the details through the window. I can see it better than you. You can't. I don't care. Good. And also, to the left of the cab window, there's, I guess, like, a crew toilet, a staff area. Obviously, when these units were in service, that area would be used for, like, parcels and other stuff, like luggage. That's, like, the guards area, if you will. At the top of the model, there's an orange warning line. And as well, on the load hall logo, I didn't notice that before, but there's lots of individual, like, door handles and hinges and stuff moulded in and painted in the respected colours. I like how they've done that, like where the A is there, you can see that the uh, grey, well, differs in colour on that door handle. Very nice. Continuing on down the model then, you can see more warning stickers underneath that orange band. And underneath the model itself, you can see lots of engine detail, with the engine and stuff there, a radiator there, as well as other moulded detail in black. Also inside, you can see there's red seating arranged in a back-to-back -back format with little doors like it actually is in real life. As well, the door handles are picked out in silver, like on the cabs. Also up there, there is a running number, which is 55012. Also, this model does have sprung buffers. I forgot to mention at the other end, they're just a little bit stiff, as you can see. But then again, they are there, so that's a good feature. And in terms of bogey detail on this model, it's fairly limited with all just moulded details. But the bits that are there, like the axle boxes and other pieces like springs and stuff like that, are all there. Also, to note, there is some steps underneath the cab door, which are just moulded and painted in black. So yeah, that is the detail segment over and done. And to be honest, I'm actually going to give that a good score for, well, detail, as it is very detailed indeed. I've spotted no faults, there's lots of separately fitted parts, there's sprung buffers, there's NEM cockets, there's detailed cab interiors, which is always very nice. So now let's see how well it performs on the railway. Right then, so here we are on the layout, and here's the DMU, or should I say, diesel rail car. Right, we're just going to place her lightly in the siding, as this is my newest bit of track. I thought I'd use it as a test track towards new models, and old models after I've cleaned them and stuff. 
as it's new track, it doesn't tend to get dirty. Right, there it is on the track, as you can very clearly see just there. We're going to actually give it its first test. As you can see, this is actually its first ever test. It's never ran before this. So let's apply power. And I think, don't know which way it's going. Look at that, the lights are on. And there it goes. Wow. That, so far, is a good runner. Look at the interior lighting as well that I mentioned. And let's go back. Oh, okay, what's the issue there then? Okay, it seems to be stuttering. Don't know why. Maybe it does just need running in. Let me just say that. It might just need running in. So I don't really know what's happening there. Okay, that's uh, a slight uh, issue. Don't actually know what's happening there. It seems to be stuttering. As if I've done something wrong in the instructions. So what seems to be the problem is, yeah, there's power going to this bogey, but not to that bogey. Okay, uh, that's a flying start. Anyway, there's the lights you can perfectly see. I'm going to just go and inspect this, and I'll be back with you in a minute. And now you join us, prying forcefully into the brand new Dapol railcar with plastic. And uh, yes, that is simply what we had to do to try and resolve the issue. So first things first, we took the body off. It had four pegs on, well, the body that came on Tom. That came off fairly quickly, as you can see. And the bit underneath that, we were still trying to figure out how to take that off. It simply was just some screws that removed. And then underneath that, there was like the actual electrical bit of the model, as you can see right now. There it is. So we decided to give it a bit of a test and we figured out what the issue was. So this model is, well, driven by a motor at one end and a drive shaft going to two flywheels in the centre. Then another drive shaft to the other bogey which picks up power and sends that to the motor. Obviously at one end, the end that the bogey wasn't going round on, that's what I mean, the wheels weren't going round on, something had gone wrong with the cog and we figured out that the cog was stiff so it wasn't turning freely. This really isn't what you want with a brand new model straight out of the box. Yeah, it, it just isn't. <sighs> Stupid thing. Right, so hello everybody. Today you join me about one month later from that last clip I filmed. And something has arrived through the post today. And it was sort of unexpected. I didn't hear the news until it actually got here. And believe it or not, this has arrived. My Dapple Class 1 2 1. Yes, as you can see, the uh, beautiful blue box has made a return, and if I just carefully place it over there, uh, I'll tell you the story. Oops, I've knocked something off the railway. It's a good sign. So, uh, my model, as you, well, well, found out before, that uh, a piece on it was actually broken. So the model went off to Rails of Sheffield, we emailed them, and it got sent there, and uh, they did some tests and stuff, I guess, like that. And then it got sent off to Dapol for some replacement parts, so it was either sent to China or Wales. Not too sure, wherever it went. Uh, but as you can see, it's back now, so that's good. Uh, and then it went back to them, back to Rails of Sheffield, that is, and it was thoroughly tested and bedded in, or ran in, as it is said. Uh, models obviously need running in so they can obviously work properly and function like they're meant to. And then a few days ago, Rails of Sheffield emailed us again saying your model has been thoroughly tested and is now in working order. And believe it or not, about three days later, it's here back in the ownership, I guess, of me to continue this video. So I'm going to open it now and I'm going to test it for the first ever time. Hopefully it runs. Fingers crossed, Rails of Sheffield well, have said it is, so uh, hopefully, all being well, it runs. Right, let's find out in three, two, one. So then, as you can see, the model is on the railway. And, oh, it does look beautiful. Uh, hopefully, 
its uh, running is just as beautiful as it looks and I've got to say I've missed this model I'm glad it's actually made a sort of return it's been off for some sort of uh, restoration if you will shouldn't have to have restoration seeing as it's new anyway uh, let's see if it works let's uh, test it with the obviously the gauge master combi controller don't know which way it's going it says it's going in reverse in fact no it's in the middle right let's just uh, see apply the power and nothing's happened that's useful oh yeah i've not flicked the point stand down i've not flicked the point right let's actually do the uh Right, that should be fine. Right, uh, let's engage the power with the uh, combi controller. And it is off. The lights have just come on. And it is off. Yay. It's actually done something of value. It's not done a dapple. It's actually done a, uh, what's the word? Like, what a model's meant to do. And that is, of course, function like a model. <laughs> As you can see, it's perfectly crawling up the siding. That's very nice indeed. And, oh, it's doing a good job of it too. Those uh, rear tail lights, as you can see, illuminating the, uh, well, the rear of the train. Now the front lights are on. As you can see, it can actually go semi-fast. Yay! A loco, or a DMU, I should say, or a rail car, that works. <laughs> Great. Right, uh, now what I'm going to do is actually do a little bit of more testing and I'm going to take it around the railway. So let's see some more shots. Well then, that is the train all ran in. And I've got to say, it runs so much better now than when I first unboxed it that first time before it went off for maintenance. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little video then. Uh, it's a bit different, isn't it, than my usual sort of out and about trainy and bossy videos. Yes, back on the model railway. Anyway, I'm gonna take you just uh, onto the uh, phone now, the phone camera, and I'll do my final sum up. And I'll go over some sort of things if you should buy this model and uh, if you shouldn't buy this model. I would recommend it, but uh, here are my thoughts anyways. So yes, the Dapple Class 121 slash 122 diesel railcar. Uh, yes, it's a good model overall in terms of detail. There's things like the painted cab interior, the bogey details pretty good. The uh, livery itself is pretty good, just on this, uh, what's the word, this version of the model, the load haul version that I picked. Obviously you can get other liveries like BR Blue and BR Green and other sort of, what's the word, geysers. That's the word, isn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, yes, but the big letdown on this model, as you've known, is all the sort of technical cock-ups, if you will. Like the uh, drive shaft or parts like that that just weren't functioning properly so the drive shaft which wasn't powering the bogey 
and uh, yeah, pretty much a fail. And here's the thing, you really shouldn't buy a new model and have to sort of send it back and let it come back to you and get it sort of a second time. You should just be able to take it out of the box, like I did, and uh, take it on your railway, have a look at it and stuff, put it on your railway, and it should just run. Obviously, you'll need to run it in and stuff, as I mentioned before, but then again, you should just be able to take it out of the box, plonk it on the track, apply power, and it should just go. Whereas this one did, it stuttered a little bit, and to start with, I thought, oh yes, that's a really, really good runner. But then uh, I realised it wasn't, and it was just a complete flop, basically. So, here's the thing, would I recommend the Dapple Railcar? Well, yes, I would recommend it, as uh, the version I got, the uh, failed version, if you will, uh, might just be a one-off. But uh, saying it's just a one-off also probably isn't true, because a batch of these, well, these models are made in batches, so they're not just made on their own, clearly, it's not like they're not got that much about them to just make them on their own so they make them in batches say the spec i got the load haul version was made in like a batch of 2250 or a number like that that means probably out of the whole batch there's about two of them that are actually fine and the rest the uh, 2248 are all well basically fails and they don't work straight out of the box which isn't very good, I've got to say. And it's not a sort of feature you really want on a brand new model, as I said a minute ago. So yeah, uh, would I recommend it? To be honest, probably not think about it now. I would, and I wouldn't. because I would because it's high in detail, and uh, there's a chance it might run properly, and when it does run properly, it is brilliant. But uh, there's also that other side over here that, uh, so, well, I know this didn't happen to me, but there could be a chance that details like those exhaust pipes could have just fallen off in bad transit. Or, like mine, it had bits broken that uh, obviously clearly weren't fitted properly, hence why I had to go back and get replacement parts. <coughs> Dapple. Um, didn't have to get replacement parts and that, and it just didn't work. So, in all honesty, I wouldn't recommend it, but it is a brilliant model overall. Apart from the complete, uh, sort of, what's the word? Hitchops of, uh, well, disaster, <laughs> that's the word. Anyway, there's my thoughts on the Dapple Class 122-121 class railcar. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and uh, leave a little comment, if you will. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Uh, a little roast for you then, Dapple. Uh, Dapple? More like Dap-lol. Huh. <laughs>